Morning, everyone. My apologies, I'm not mic'd up. And as a sports fan, I've got screen envy. It's just amazing. Uh, I'm going to talk with you about um, some of the work that uh, my colleagues have spoken about, but at a systems level. Uh, my name is Frank Tracy, and I work for Children's Health Queensland uh, in Australia. Just a quick snapshot of uh, the Australian population. While that's up there and you're having a look at that, I'll talk to you a little bit about what I'm going to run through over the next 15 minutes. Um, as I've mentioned, I'm going to look at a systems perspective and how we've brought data to life to inform clinical services planning and services planning across a system of care. And we've done that using uh, the social determinants of health as a prism, as a new way, well, as a way to think about planning and delivering services that are really impactful and that shift the way we think about health services for the future. Over the past couple of days, I've been struck by how many hospital beds we're building. And uh, I think we need to get some proportion in our investment around how we actually work in communities to prevent the investment in hospital beds for the future. I'm not saying it's an either or, I'm saying it's an and. So the Queensland population, this is what it looks like for children living in Queensland. My apologies for the grey uh, type font, but we've got about 1.3 million children and young people between the age of 0 to uh, 18 years. This snapshot uh, tells you what it is that you need to know about growing up and living in Queensland. It's a vast state. We are challenged by the tyranny of distance, and we're challenged by the fact that up to half of our population live in rural and remote areas. So I read some statistics yesterday. Apparently, uh, Queensland, the state of Queensland is five times the size of the state of Texas. Uh, what we've decided to do is to take a different approach to the planning of services for children and young people. Children's Health Queensland is a unique hospital and health service. We are one of 16 in the state of Queensland, but we have a statewide remit to deliver services across the state and to support capacity building with our other hospital and health services as they deliver services to children and young people closer to home. This slide, I won't speak to the detail, I'll let you read that. But what it does is that it speaks to the social determinants of health. Heckman's work is probably best known among you, an educationalist, a Nobel uh, Prize winner. I just draw your attention to the graph on the left-hand side. This was one of the graphs that really, this was one of the, the images that really struck me. And as, a, as a, uh, an executive and as a, a lead for planning and strategy for an organization, this really did speak to me. If I think about the opportunities that are afforded to children across the social spectrum. If we look at the investment in childhood, it's a smart investment to invest early. It's a smart investment to invest in prevention. Unfortunately, our system tends to be shaped much more like this. And it's difficult to navigate those silos. It's even more difficult to work within them at times. In Queensland, what we have is a government that's future focused. Our premier has a list of priorities. There are six here. In our planning as a statewide service, we have aligned our work to the work of our government. We have identified very, very quickly and very intentionally those priorities that we will focus on for the next 10 years. Not only at a state level, but at a federal level, we've also used the information from the federal government and reviews by the federal government to inform our thinking and our planning. So the picture I'm trying to paint for you here is we're taking a broad systems view and using the social determinants of health as the lens on which we will see the planning and delivery of health services for our children. You'd be familiar with the quadruple aim. 
Again, we want to build an evidence base. We want our processes to be based on the best evidence. We have an integrated care process that we use. This was designed specifically by Children's Health Queensland, again using uh, the Canterbury model from New Zealand as its base. But moving on to the most important part of the presentation, the very first and most basic component of planning for health service delivery is understanding the need then we need to think much more about planning for outcomes, not planning for outputs in an activity-based funded environment. Then we need to think about delivering on those outcomes. What does that look like? What does that mean? We need to measure those. And then we need to feed that back into understanding the new set of needs. And can I tell you, for most of you in the audience, I'm sure you'll understand this, that each community each village, each community has its own specific needs. So a cookie cutter approach to planning, a cookie cutter approach to delivering services and building systems will not work if you are not cognizant of the need to be flexible and to create systems and services that are accessible to populations because each community's needs are different. I've mentioned um, how we've built on the social determinants of health and the World Health Organization provides us with a very useful, succinct definition of that. I won't dwell on this, but I'll illustrate to you what it is that we have done with that work. We have taken those social determinants and we have used a federally mandated approach. It's called the NEST framework. We've used that approach that uh, brings to life the social determinants and focuses on outcomes for children and young people through the life journey. We've created a series of health indicators based on those social determinants. So sitting behind those, we've got about 170 different indicators that we can measure in terms of the impact of service delivery on a child. We further refined that and we've identified the seven factors that impact and affect a child growing up in communities in Queensland. These are all the social determinants that you'll be familiar with. Learning, being healthy, being loved and safe, using services, having material basics and participating in community, making friends, growing up, having a neighborhood, playing sports. All of these impact significantly on the health and well-being of children as they grow. Again, I leave you to read this very briefly. I'm aware of death by PowerPoint. I've got way too many in here. But what we've done is that we've taken large-scale data sets from government agencies. And uh, like my colleague mentioned earlier, we've done some analysis of that. So I've taken the 80% of the data that we report on under our contracts with government. And I've asked a series of government agencies to contribute their data sets to us at Children's Health Queensland. We have then collated that data analyzed that data and created a narrative that our clinicians and our communities understand. So we have 32 different data sets from 12 agencies and we are now able to predict with a relative level of accuracy the life lived for a child in the 528 statistical area twos in the state of Queensland. Now, statistical area two uh, is a population anything from three to 25,000, but it sits roughly in that 10 to 20,000 uh, mark. So we are able now, with a degree of accuracy, to talk about the life of a child in that community. When we bring this data to a local 
hospital and health service, they're able to plug their data into this system and it will give them an even more granular picture of how their population is accessing services, both hospital and community. In terms of uh, using the data, we've been very intentional about how we've targeted it. So we've used CIFA, social economic data, we've used census data, and a range of other data points, including domestic violence, attendance at school, so educational data is pulled into the mix. I'm rapidly going through this, and this presentation will be available for you after the session, but I want to get to how we make the data speak. My colleagues spoke about creating dashboards. Well, we have built that function. So we create dashboards that are live dashboards. We use ClickView. We are able to zoom into these, zoom into specific communities, look at the profile of that community and how it's shaped. But the key to this has been our ability to create a compelling narrative for the life of a child growing up in any one of those 528 SA2 areas in Queensland. This is what it looks like. So this graphic asks more questions than it answers, and that's the intention. The intention is to pull the data and make it meaningful. The intention is to look at the, the stats that one in seven women in Queensland smoke while pregnant. The data tells us that 94% of children aged five years are fully immunized. There's a worrying statistic that one in four children start school with significant developmental delays. So that data is pulled directly from the education data from the national data set. The power of this is that when we sit in a room with our colleagues from other jurisdictions, we're able to paint for them a picture of what their community looks like, what the life of a child growing up in that community looks like, and how our agencies are coordinating, or more often not coordinating, their strategies, their investment, and their care delivery systems. This picture is the life of a child growing up in Kingston, which is a metropolitan neighborhood in Brisbane. I leave you to imagine what the life experience is for that child. And how we as agencies need to think differently about how we provide health and social care to support this child be the best, best version of themselves and achieve their potential as they grow up in these circumstances. I don't need to talk to this room about the importance of partnering, but it's critical. When we identify a child or community with a certain set of characteristics, well, we can predict with a degree of accuracy what it is that we need to do, and then we need to take targeted action. We must partner for success. We must do things differently. What we're doing is not working as well as it should. We're investing in technology. We're investing in hospitals. We're investing in different ways of doing things. And my goodness, we're reporting a sea of data across multiple government agencies. What we've done in Queensland, at Children's Health Queensland, is pull that together and create a compelling narrative that will help us think differently about our investment for the future. I'm just going to show you a short video, just by way of closing, that brings all of this together. It is the Children's Health Queensland Clinical Services Plan. We've used all of this data and this methodology to create this 10-year plan for the delivery of services to children in Queensland. trying to find some volume. 
Health Queensland, we are passionate about leading life-changing care for children and young people. One in four Queenslanders are aged 0 to 19, and the number of children and young people in Queensland is expected to grow by 15% over the next 10 years. We know that the early years of a child's life provide the foundation for health, development and well-being across their lifetime. These foundations set children up to thrive and grow into healthy and resilient adults who live meaningful and fulfilled lives. Queensland's population is diverse and our approach to children and young people's health and well-being acknowledges the interplay between people and the economy, the environment, their cultural norms, communities, families and peers. Our vision of a healthier tomorrow means that we have a loving and safe home environment, access to material basics like housing, food and clothing, an enriched learning experience, a sense of community that we are engaged and participating in, proactive healthy behaviours like a good diet and regular exercise, and access to quality health services when we need them. In the coming years, there will be numerous challenges that we need to address to keep Queensland's children and young people healthy and thriving. The Children's Health and Wellbeing Services Plan and the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Health and Wellbeing Services Plan represent our vision for the future of health services for children, young people and their families. Children's Health Queensland has identified a suite of service directions and strategies that describe how our clinical services will adapt to meet the changing needs of Queensland's children and young people over the next 10 years. Our 29 strategies are oriented around children, young people and their families and aligned to five overarching service directions which represent our key areas of focus. Promoting wellbeing and health equity we are taking a population health approach to service planning with a particular focus on reducing health inequities and directing services to those who need them most. Improving health service design and integration. We are designing and delivering our services in a way that is inclusive, easy to navigate, child and family friendly and maintains the continuity of care across service providers and settings. Evolving service models. Our health services are evolving in line with the ever-changing and often increasingly complex health needs of children and young people. And we are driving greater consistency in approaches to child and youth health statewide. Delivering services closer to home. We are enabling safe and sustainable services closer to home through statewide capability building, delivering outreach and shared care arrangements and leading the way in technology-enabled models of service delivery. Pursuing innovation. We are working with partners across sectors to drive improved outcomes and to incorporate existing and new technology into our services to improve the patient and family experience, clinical outcomes and efficiency. Children's Health Queensland is passionate about its role as a leader within a networked system of services and our clinical services plans are an important step towards taking a more holistic approach to children and young people's health and well-being to ensure they can reach their full potential. Thank you so much for um, your attention during the presentation and um, I'm very happy to take questions uh, afterwards or if you uh, drop me an email, I'm very happy to talk with you about some of the work that we've been doing and uh, perhaps how we might be able to work together. Thank you. Thank you.